Team Black Sheep's Lucid Stack is here. And there's a couple of very interesting things to note about this. Where do I even begin? All right, what would you say is the most reliable brand in all of drones that you can trust the most? Hmm, Foxier? I don't know. <laughs> like, what? Oh, most reliable, uh, most reliable company is probably this, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's the third place, then? <laughs> what, what, what about now? <laughs> oh, it's TBS. I see, of course, it's TBS. Of course, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> now we gotta stop monkeying around because this is their new gorilla mount. And there's several new innovative things going on here. The first thing you notice right off the bat is this unusual mounting right here. I don't get it. What exactly? Don't you get? But what's going on here? Because the flight controller is 20 by 20. Well, that's because you have this special plate that converts it. You're gonna have these little risers getting your stack a couple of millimeters away from the frame. And you're gonna have this going on top. Those M2 screws are gonna go through and thread onto this little cage. And then your flight controller is going to mount right on top. You're gonna have a little bit of hard mounting, specific distances between your flight controller and EAC. This is the gorilla. They call it the gorilla mount. You see how the it's like mount. 19 by 30 something? Look at how close these things to metal. Yeah, I mean, that's a little treacherous if you have a fat solder. I Which very much. John does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that it has this little cage over that you can put your flight controller on. Where does it mount otherwise, though? Because this is weird mounting the outside of it. Oh, it has this little bottom thing. Because this is a new mounting standard, you're going to have to make the decision on if you're going to get a frame that can accommodate this. Now, they are going to have a 3D printable jig that you can use to drill out any of your favorite frames and mount this sucker up. But I'm I'm probably going to be too lazy to do that. So I'm going to be waiting on framing manufacturers to see if they're going to adopt. Speaking of that, I already have the first frame designer who is jumping on board and that is Din Drones. Of course, he's always at the forefront and he is making a special mid plate for his OZR 5X that we just covered on the channel in a full review. So far, he's the only frame manufacturer that's designed. A um, I think it's because Din sponsored by TBS. That's why he made his frame to fit this. Thing. yeah because i was like how is this mounted yeah. but so then there's some sort of converter that puts it to 22 yeah if you don't have a frame that does it there is a little mounter uh, converter plate you can i mean that being said it just seems a little extra and you think it's going to gain a lot of weight but it's only three grams but your mm, three grams but your gummies weigh point seven grams so it's only 2.3 grams Here's the Foxier Reaper ESC, the big one with the Foxier Reaper flight controller and it's at 21.3 grams. Here is the Team Black Sheep ESC and the flight controller and at 19.2 grams. So you actually end up saving a pair to a premium race worthy stack. Look at that, this is 25 counting grams now because he's building this super light, <laughs> super light frame. It's cool, but is it necessary? I don't think I honestly is. wouldn't mind for this ESC to be a little bit wider, but then just have a regular 20 by 20 mounting. Like if they made room for the holes in there? Yeah, yeah. Then they got to make an ESC wider, but... I think they were saying that normally you have such big holes in the ESC that you have to like rearrange it in a weird way. And then a lot of times when you crash, you hit that standoff into the corner. So by okay. doing it this way... You can have a little more space on that corner. I mean, it definitely looks cool. The worst, it looks cool. It's important for your drone to look cool because that builds confidence in it. And Neil, Neil is not very excited, and that's why he needs excited recognition. Yeah. Oh. Where are you sticking, Neil? <laughs> now this is Foxier's beefy wide ESC. And what do you notice about this Team Black Sheep? They're both using the large, nice size FETs. If we go onto the back, you can see we're using the large, nice size FETs. What do you notice about Team Black Sheep stack offering is that you actually have solder pads on the top and the bottom and you have individual solder pads for your connections should you ever break off the connector or should you just choose not to use the connector. So if you ever do manage to mess up a pad, you got a whole nother set. And some people actually just prefer to solder on the bottom for a super clean build depending on how you're building it up. It's also beautiful soldering by Johnny Five, so 
I took the most amount of time ever. A high voltage 60 to 70 amp AM32 ESC. BL Hell is not gonna be getting you down right here. Probably the most significant feature, always important on this channel, the cost. Now, for the inconvenience of having a weird mounting pattern, you could get a really nice stack for $90. That's cheap. This is like a time machine that transports you back to 2017. Exactly, yeah. But it is kind of annoying. But Dane's frame made special mounting for this. But then you said it doesn't fit the canopy, the special Dane's canopy. Yeah, it doesn't fit the canopy. You have to yeah, run it. Yeah, yeah. So Dane, you gotta fix it right now. So as a frame designer, are you gonna make Open Racer compatible with Gorilla? I mean, I can, it's like 10 minutes, but uh, I need this stack. I need to have this stack. So if you get me the send me this second, then I make it. Oh, so that's yeah. the trick. That's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so if you send one to every frame designer, then they'll probably do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we need to measure all this stuff. That's true. I know they provide a um, little pattern. Oh, yeah. They're like open source pattern, but pattern isn't good. You, what, you need to have a stack. What do you think <laughs> about hard mounting the ESC? I am skeptical about that because when it crash, you need a little bit of dampening for your electronics. And this is yeah and um, and also this uh, i don't know the this... bike controller is dampened yeah stop the gummies and these uh metal things are like way too close to the xt60 connector that, that just looks scary a little bit this is going to come in two different options for flight controllers one with an icm gyro it's only ninety dollars and i'm not talking about ninety dollars for the esc i'm talking about ninety dollars for the combo ninety dollars for the whole enchilada electronics prices have been going up so much that getting a good esc for racing or freestyle build is easily going to cost you eighty dollars ninety dollars and we're probably not too far off from getting to that one hundred dollar mark flight controllers are also going up that means if you take a eighty dollar flight controller combine it with a ninety dollar esc you're looking at about 170 dollars stack whereas you can have all of this less than half the price now say you don't want to deal with that icm gyro and you want your tried and true mpu 6000 they're going to offer that as well in a pro version of the stack and guess how much more you're going to pay for that that's right only 10 buckaronis that's right only 10 more dollars to upgrade to the pro version now what are some other features it has usb-c built on board and it's on the top diatone grievously put their usb-c connector on the bottom for several years and what would happen is in a hard enough crash where you fell down you would impact that because it resides right over the motor pads and create a huge fireball their stacks were just dying left and right and they didn't really want to take responsibility for it and then i think that's kind and why they fell off of the stack game and what's this back here this is an hd plug that'll take you just a few minutes and then you don't have to do any soldering for your video system the other nice thing is if you are running crossfire or tracer you have a little spot to be able to put it on there now if you're not this whole section of the board is flat so you could very easily just put your express lrs receiver right here with a little bit of double-sided tape and then bada boom bada bing if you don't want to do that you have a plethora of pads a what a plethora very nice screen printing on the bottom right here well because of the weird mounting that the tbs stack has a lot of my messing around with this thing was just figuring out the best way to mount it i actually had gummies hanging it from the top plate and it fit just fine but because i didn't have enough room to put nuts on both sides of the stack based on the screw hardware that i had it was jittering around yvonne and jordil both looked at my black box log even though i felt it sounded and flew fine and they noted that it was a little bit sketchy <laughs> <laughs> but instead of fixing it i went ahead and sent it anyway now din drones who's the one that designed this frame to accommodate the gorilla mount he's actually going to be including the proper hardware so that you can get that perfect seal and not have that issue if you're building a new setup for the first time i'd say half the time just goes into how you're going to lay out your stack anyway finding the right hardware finding the right gummy heights now because of my testing with sketchiness i did burn a total of five a total of five motors that's right five motors i roasted and that was just my mistake but what's impressive though is out of the 15 or 20 packs i flew this i dangerously burned five motors because of my poor mounting decisions but guess what the esc is still fine i slapped 
more motors on there sent it again and it's still coming back for more so that's a pretty good sign of durability if you can burn motors and it doesn't burn the stack pretty good now how did those murder motors burn one of them was my fault because the back screws i was also testing aluminum screws and i didn't put thread locker and they got loose and that burned the motor four of them burnt at one time because of that weird gummy mounting it actually flew fine till i crashed but i tried to turtle mode too hard and i saw a little bit of smoke so it didn't actually catch fire but if you look at the windings you can see that all four of them are in various states of burnt what i ended up doing is i ended up mounting it as it's designed with the little bracket in there and then i switched the vtx over from the v3 to the whoop board and just double-sided tape that to the top. If you recall, before the V3 came out, a lot of racers were just still using the whoop board and just double-siding taping it because it was smaller and lighter than the V2. And so that's what I've done right here, and it seems to be working out great. Really what's going to make or break this thing is how many other frame manufacturers are going to design mounting solutions for this. On the racing side, so far, Din Jones is the only one that has done it. And this is one of the more popular racing frame options right now because of how light it is and also because it has a lot of versatility with being able to add things like the brace the removable arm protection the turtle mode fin or that spectacular carbon fiber nylon pod oh i'm excited this is like the first tbs product in it in like in years right the first actual yeah. tbs product because they had their like goggle goggle power oh well, that's and, true but that doesn't count as a product so i don't know this is the first. I'm excited for it. Well, you go now two stacks by TBS and Emergent RC at the same time. So they can finally fight each other once again. Well, but this stack doesn't have a uh, integrated tracer. So true, but it's cheap. Which one do you like better? Yeah, probably. I like cheap. Cheap. How much the Orca stack? There's no official US pricing, but it's like $175 if you convert euros. And this is 90 yeah, yeah, boy. yeah. <laughs> so pros and cons, though, the Orca stack will be way faster to build because it just plugs. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't have a weird mount. Which I'm sure TBS, they're like, this is the future of the mounting of your ESCs. Yeah. And I, future. I mean, it's a cool idea. I don't believe it's a future, though. I don't know. That's... Maybe they figure if they made a good stack that's cheap, it will destroy every other company. So they have to make one thing annoying about it. Yeah. So that everybody else can survive. <laughs> and so that everyone else can bitch about something. Mads Tech, it almost gave him the aneurysm. Why? Oh, why? Now, I don't know what drug. Actually, I do know what drugs they were smoking, but I don't want an ESC on an adapter. You may as well, right, kiss, smash yourself in the face a hundred times. So I can't comment on the long-term reliability, but after about 20 packs and five motors burning, this stack is just fine. A lot of times, if you burn a couple of motors, the stack is going to be toast, but this one has held up super fine, which is what you would expect from 70 amp rating, that it's going to be tough and... This thing is tough.